Hello everyone. So um, for those of you that aren't aware, recently uh, the progressives had like an online war or some shit. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So it was like everybody was basically going at everybody's necks or each other's necks. Um, and it's all started because of Mr. Jimmy Dore came out and pretty much um, called on AOC to um, get together with the other uh, Justice Democrats and progressives in Congress and withhold their vote for Nancy Pelosi in this upcoming um, early bit of January um, unless she brings a Medicare for All vote to the floor. Uh, um, Congresswoman uh, Pramila Jayapal's bill for Medicare for All. And so this sparked um, quite the reaction from many people online and AOC herself. Now, she didn't specifically respond to Jimmy Dore, but she responded to Mr. Uh, Justin Jackson. I think that's his name, the running back for the Los Angeles Chargers. And it was pretty interesting, uh, the discourse surrounding this entire situ situation. So I don't want to make this video very long. I'll try and sum summarize this very quickly for you. So what AOC was basically saying was, well, we don't have the votes because we don't have the votes. You know, we can't do it. We'll lose. And that's not a good look. And now it's not the time. And, you know, um, we already know who doesn't support it. There's a co-sponsor list that shows you everybody who supports it. Okay, well, a couple of things. If now it's not the time, when is it? When? When is the time? We're in a pandemic where 300 people, 300 people, 300,000 people have lost their lives to this virus. 15 million people have lost their uh, health care during the pandemic. Millions more have lost their health care under the rule of Donald Trump. And the numbers keep rising. When, when, when do we, when do we stop being cuckolds to power and finally fight back? When? They don't have an answer for that. They don't have an answer for that. And as far as that co-sponsor list goes, that's in name only. That's just, oh, yeah, yeah, I support it. You know, Brianna Drew Gray uh, wrote an article on uh, current affairs, and she brought up how uh, Kamala Harris and Cory Booker both supported Medicare for All until they started running for president. And then all of a sudden, uh, they had to back away from it. I wonder why. I wonder why. Pete Buttigieg, a guy who I despise, at one point supported Medicare for All. The fuck happened to Pete? He doesn't support it anymore. That co-sponsor list is a bunch of bullshit. And what happened? What did she say after she was called out on that? She said, oh, well, it still doesn't really matter because, um, you know, some, uh, you know, Democrats will... Uh, still vote for it, knowing that it'll go over to the Senate where it's basically a graveyard and it'll get, you know, slapped down anyway. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like a loser. That sounds like an excuse. You know, I try, I, I, I really, I, I try to hold back on the progressives in Congress because I'm thankful that they're there and I'm glad that we're getting some form of representation in this fucked up government that we have, but at what cost? At what cost? You know? Like what are you what are you doing? Honestly, what are you doing? You know? You remember the Tea Party movement? How 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 savage they were and how they made the uh the GOP feel, how they made the Republican Party feel? They actually shifted the Overton window to the right. I don't know if that's right or left, how this, whatever. But they shifted the Overton window. They did. They made people quit their jobs. I have right here. The Freedom Caucus went balls to the wall and drove John Banner out of office. I had to write that down because I forget it. But they did that. And they also extracted concessions. 
that's that's what happens when you want something. You fight for it. You don't say, well, the time isn't right. No, no, no. The time is always right to fight for what is necessary. It's always right. There is no specific time. How would you have felt back in the 1800s? Let's say the early 1800s, you know? When slavery was still running rampant through this country. And then uh, some poor soul was to say, you know, this whole slavery thing, I'm not so sure about it. People would look at you as if you were a fool. They would. They would look at you like this guy has lost his marbles. But guess what? Today, hundreds of years later, we look at that like, what? Oh, my God. Those people were savages. Slavery? Seriously? Oh, no. It's universally recognized as a bad thing to anybody with the coherent mind. It's recognized as a bad thing. And so you can draw the comparison to something like Medicare for all. You know, uh, you know, the, 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 the goons, the ghouls that are in the government now that are uh, backed by these pharmaceutical uh, industries and the health insurance uh, companies. You know, they look at Medicare for all and try to draw up different types of bullshit that's been debunked a thousand times over as to why we shouldn't have it. But for some reason, the consensus among the American people, the people on the ground, is that that's something that they overwhelmingly want. A Fox News exit poll showed that 72 percent of the country supported Medicare for all. And the support for it is only growing during this pandemic. And so what Jimmy Dore was saying is that we need to seize the moment. OK, because this pandemic is showing a lot of people that may not have previously known that. The healthcare system we have right now isn't it, man. It isn't it. You know, it's not stable. There's no choice. You don't get to choose. They say, oh, well, you know, you lose choice. You don't have choice now. You're getting robbed. You're getting robbed. But we know that, right? We know that. So it, it's just, it's, it's quite befuddling to me that it seems like AOC is going to hell and back to not challenge Nancy Pelosi for whatever reason. And I feel like I can draw up a couple of reasons as to why, you know, I mean, I can only imagine being in Congress, meeting AOC, meeting AOC, meeting Nancy Pelosi, and, you know, maybe AOC grew somewhat accustomed to her. You know, you meet these people, they're nice to you, you're nice back, but they're your enemies. And so it becomes difficult to twist arms and to step on toes because you don't want to upset anyone. But that's exactly what you got to do, man. I'm sorry. You're not there to make friends. This isn't, you know, mama bear and all the other nonsense that uh, she calls her or whatever. You know, bef before she was even in Congress, she was protesting outside of Nancy Pelosi's office. That's how she got in. So it's like, what the hell happened? So I don't know, man. There's a lot of differing opinions on this. And a lot of people, they're offering their rebuttal to Jimmy Dore's stance and a lot of other people's stance that have joined in. But the only rebuttal is, no, we shouldn't do it. They're not they're not offering anything else. David Sirota accurately pointed out, you know, why not? Why just do Medicare for all? Let's ask for other things. Ask for other concessions. Bring other votes uh, down to the, uh, the, the House floor. Perfect. Let's do it. But see, the people that are against it, they're not only against it in principle, but they're not, you're not offering anything else. Okay, well, you don't, what, what should we do? Tell me, enlighten me. They don't have an answer, okay? The Tea Party tried to repeal Obamacare, what, like 40 times? They knew they were gonna fail each time. They didn't care. Because when you want something, you fight tooth and nail for it, okay? We're not gonna take over the Democratic Party with some kumbaya, you know, singing church hymns, you know, everybody join hands type of shit. No. No. As many people would say on the left, this is a hostile takeover. It has to be forceful. You know, no violence, of course. We're not advocating for violence, but they're, we're, they're not just going to let us walk in sit down at the table and start directing things no we gotta barge our way in we gotta break down 
the hinges of the door. We got to break the door down. That's how we get what we want. We got to twist arms, guys. They spit in our face all the time. You you telling me you can't withhold a vote for a person that has what, like a 20, 30 percent approval rating? I don't know what it is. Nobody likes Nancy Pelosi. OK. And also, I talked about it in, uh, I think, my last video. But most recently, what did we see with Bernie Sanders and Josh Hawley? Two against 98, two senators that wanted relief for average Americans, for working people. 98 didn't care. 98 didn't want it. We're against it. Bernie Sanders stood uh, on the Senate floor and said, hey, nobody's going home for holidays until we get some relief for average Americans, for the working people, for people that need economic relief. And guess what? He got it. You see what happens when you're willing to stand up for something? You see what happens when you're willing to fight for something? You get things in return. Now, he didn't get $1,200 that he wanted, but he got something. And the moral of the story is, guys, don't allow these, you know, people in Congress to tell you that things aren't possible or now it's not the time or we can't do this right now. As long as you have the courage of your convictions, then you know that what you're advocating for is the right thing. Now is always the time. And that's why I'm so thankful that Nina Turner is running for Congress. And yes, she's running for Congress. We got confirmation. She came out and uh, said what she had to say. If you, if you don't know, just check her Twitter, check her social media, and you'll see it. Jesus Christ, we need her, man. Because this isn't going to work. There are no leaders there right now. And she's the leader that we need. Okay? And if she's there, she can kind of walk out where people like AOC and others are afraid to, and she can kind of take the arrows, right? Let your strongest uh, soldier with the best armor take the arrows, then everybody else comes in from behind and they win the war. You know, I know that sounds bad on Nina's part, but I mean, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> somebody's got to somebody's got to take uh, take the bullets, man. And uh, she's more than capable of doing so. So anyway, I've been rambling for too long. Um, I do plan on donating to Nia. Nia, I do plan on donating to Nina. To Nina can't speak today um but that's pretty much all i have thanks for watching i'm malik peace